Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is week 59. And this week I only have three topics, but the last one is kind of lengthy, so uh, that's why I kept it to only three. Uh, first topic I want to talk about is a drone that almost hit a helicopter somewhere in Tulsa. And we're going to show you the footage. Uh, something else is uh, <laughs> a video that actually a student sent us and I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Uh, I call it drone or UFO because, well, UFO is not always what we think it is, uh, but it's an unknown flying object. So uh, you, you guys can help me try to maybe figure out what it is. And then the last thing is the big topic, which is a recap of the FAA symposium. I just passed the last two days. I spent the last two days uh, going over the symposium and attending stuff. And I get some information for you that I wanted to share. So let's get going. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is this near miss with a helicopter. And this is what it looks like is a Inspire 2 or Inspire type of drone that is heading straight towards a helicopter, kind of in a straight line. And as you can see, the prop washes it down. And, uh, and people are, are on the ground, actually, on the audio, you can hear people say, oh, the drone is going to hit the, the helicopter. Um, so not quite sure what happened. Don't want to really speculate on what happened. Um, the reason I'm showing this to you is because I want this to be a reminder that we need to check on our environment. Uh, when you're flying out there, you need to be looking around. You need to be finding out what is going on. Whether or not this is what happened there, it doesn't really matter. Um, what I want to do is I, I want to emphasize that at all time, this can happen to us. This can happen to any of us if we're not paying attention to our environment. The helicopter was flying at a low altitude, which is what helicopters do. Uh, I hear people a lot say, well, helicopters can't fly below 500 feet. That's not correct. Uh, helicopters can fly below 500 feet. So just a reminder, when you're out there, be very careful. Look at your environment. Helicopters will sneak up on you. Uh, they're pretty loud, but depending on the terrain, depending on the type of situation, you may not see it. So if you're flying in an environment that's pretty busy, um, maybe bring a VO with your visual observer and see what you can do. So uh, hopefully we find out. I actually heard from one of our students, I don't remember where I heard it, but I think somebody said that uh, they actually caught the person who did that. So maybe we'll get more information. Maybe we can learn from the actual situation and see what happened. But in the meantime, just be careful out there. Next video is coming from uh, one of our students, Brianna. Uh, she's one of our graduates, actually. She got 98, 98 on the exam. Uh, I remember Brianna because she did the training with her dad and they were competing to, uh, to get the best score. And, uh, and she actually beat her dad, but don't tell her dad. Um, so she sent me this video a couple of days ago. This was right after the 4th of July. And she said at first she thought this was a firework and you can see the video in the background. And um, after a while, she realized that actually the lights were not really moving. And she said that this kind of stayed in place right here. And, and I'm, I'm having issues with this because this is two really bright red lights that are not moving. This is obviously not an airplane. Airplane or even a helicopter usually have flashing lights with the beacon lights. Um, something with steady lights, the only thing I can think about is would be a drone. But this seems to be like extremely bright lights. Um, I know that some manufacturers, and I have some lights on my drones that blink red, but I've never seen anything steady like this that, that is just so so bright in the sky. So I don't know, maybe you guys have better idea than uh, I do on what's going on. She said that her mom at a different time saw the same thing with blue lights. And she said that these red lights were on and then all of a sudden they just turned off. And, uh, and then she said that these... Um, the, the blue lights came on as well on this drone. So let me know in the comment, speculate all you want. Until then, it's a UFO, it's an unknown flying object. So we found a UFO, Brianna, you've got a UFO. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is the UAS, uh, the, the FAA AUVSI uh, symposium. And um, I was a bit critical of it a couple of weeks ago because the price tag was pretty high. And, uh, and I debated for a while and then about a month ago, I decided that I was going to just do it and I was just, we were just going to pay for it and, uh, and then see kind of what the symposium had to do, had to offer. And, uh, and actually, I'm really glad that we did it. This was a great, great symposium. Now, just like anything else, there were some hiccups. They were, uh, not me, quite frankly, I was able to get on all the different sessions, but I know some people had trouble getting on some of the sessions. Uh, but... This is kind of a first, I've never really done that before. I've gone to plenty of, of meetings and symposiums in the past for various topics, but never one online. Now, what I really liked about the format was the fact that you could actually jump from, from one uh, keynote to another keynote just like that. You don't have to get up from your chair, 
not bother people, get to a different room, get lost in the hallway, whatever it is. Um, you had your planning right here. You knew exactly what was going on. You could just go back, go to a new one. It's all pre-recorded, it's all recorded. So now I can actually go back for, I think the next three months and watch whatever I missed. And the great part about all this was the ability to actually talk in round tables. Um, you could create on your own round table. You could go into a round table and talk with other people and just a lot of really good conversations in there going on, whether it was with the FA, a ton of FA personnel out there, uh, talking and, and just being willing to answer questions, to talk to people, to take feedback and whatever it was. So I spent a lot of time in those rooms, actually talking to people, uh, making connections. So this was extremely beneficial. So I'm going to give you a little bit of my takeaway from some of the points that I heard, some of the points I heard, I'm not going to lie, not really excited about, but some of the things, other connections were a lot, uh, very positive. So uh, on the downside, let's talk about kind of the, the negative points. Um, Jay Merkel, now himself, Jay is, it seems like he's a great guy, uh, but um, basically said that the final ruling is pretty much done on remote ID and that this is going to, this is in the review stage at the moment. So it means that the, the information is out and, uh, it's, and it's, it's out there. They've decided what they're gonna do with remote ID. And then now they're gonna be released, uh, they're gonna be ready to release it to the public. Now I'm assuming the review process is pretty long because they've mentioned December, 2020 for remote ID uh, final ruling. So um, why am I not excited about this? I'm not excited about this because uh, there were a lot of comments that were submitted. And, uh, and in talking to a few people, it looks like that these comments, they went through them very quickly. Now, it, it could mean that there were a lot of duplicate comments. It could mean that there were a lot of comments that meant the same thing. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence on that side about what happened to all these comments and were they just in vain. Uh, we spend a lot of time, you guys spend a lot of time submitting your comments. We spend a lot of time trying to educate the community as to what was going on so they could submit their voice and have their voices heard. And, and I hope in the end it wasn't for nothing. Um, but the, uh, the one thing that I did not really care for was uh, Administrator Dixon from the FAA. The FAA administrator, the, 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 if you're not familiar, it's kind of the, the head honcho, the top guy. He basically mentioned the term service providers. Service provider means that we are going to be in a situation, more than likely, I'm speculating, with the, um, having a middleman to access the airspace. And I don't like that. I don't like having a middleman to access the airspace because we went through a lot of these discussions in the past. It's not necessary. We can get remote ID put in place without paying a middleman. And if we're not paying the middleman, we're going to be paying one way or another by sharing our data. Um, but more than likely having to pay a middleman to do this. And, um, and, and, and I'm, and I'm reading stuff, I'm reading stuff online and I'm reading stuff from people that were at the conference that are going to be the middlemen and, and they're excited about it, obviously, because they're going to be making probably a lot of money out of this. But they're basically saying that um, you don't really need to have an Internet connection uh, in order to fly the drone. You'll be able to have that broadcast functionality. So. I don't know if this is going to be in the final ruling. I don't think they know if it's going to be in the final ruling, but they're lining themselves up for what's in the NPRM, which is not good because now if you require an internet connection, it means that how much data is going to go. We've talked about this before. How much is this going to cost us? The bottom line is how much is this going to cost us? And, um, and, and I'm not too excited about this. So that's, that's the downside. Again, I'm speculating, so I want to see what's going to be on the final ruling. But based on a few hints here and there, we're going to have service providers. And service providers are going to be a middleman. And if they are, what is the cost going to be? So on the positive side, okay, let's move to the positive side. Uh, Wings program for drones. And actually I've known about this. I didn't want to say anything because I wasn't sure if this was uh, open for public information or not, but it came from the FAA. So I figured now I can talk about it. Um, the, um, the Wings program for airplane is pretty cool. It's a program where you can get credits throughout uh, the two years that you are current. And then at the end of the two years, if you want to renew your pilot, airplane pilot or helicopter pilot, manned aircraft pilot certificate, then you can do that through uh, the WINGS program, which is good. It's, it, it forces people, not forces, it, it encourages people to get recurrent by getting uh, educated, which is awesome. Instead of taking this 
uh, 40 question, $160 stupid test uh, with the uh, testing center and giving 160 bucks to the testing center, potentially you could be going through this WINGS program and, um, and then and maybe we call it the props. I know some people were talking about this, the props program. And then you can get credit in order to renew your certificate. So I love this idea. Uh, I was approached a couple of weeks ago to be on one of these committees. So I'm going to be doing that. And, uh, and I'm excited, actually. So hopefully we have more news on this. If I can share stuff as I'm working on it, I will share it. If not, then I'll tell you when it's official. But uh, but that's pretty exciting. So. That was one of the positive. Um, some numbers, uh, the FAA released some data and said that we have 182,000 remote pilots in the system. 182,000 pilots, that's quite a bit. And um, that was as of July 1st, 2020. I just wanted to put that number out there. Uh, another positive thing coming out of this symposium, talked with quite a few of the FAA folks out there and uh, and shout out to John. John, uh, as soon as I walked, stepped into one of the conversation, John was like, hey, Greg, uh, I follow you on YouTube. So it's cool to know that the FAA is following. Uh, so John, hi, uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Uh, but we had really meaningful conversations with FAA people. And, uh, and you know, I'm critical of the FAA and a lot of other people are critical of the FAA, but at the end of the day, uh, there are people on the front lines that are representing the FAA. And these people are just like you and I. They love drones, they love flying, and they want to push this industry forward. And this was kind of our discussion. They have this FAA thing uh, hanging on top of their head because it's an entity. But at the end of the day, that entity makes decisions that we don't always like. But down in the trenches, we have people like, like John, like uh, Kevin, Kevin Morris, the FAA drone guy. I had a great conversation with him as well. But these guys are helping and they're here to help. And that was the message that they wanted to um, wanted me to share with, with you guys is the fact that the FAA is not there to nail you. That's not their goal. Their goal is to help educate. And, and yeah, if you're going to do something stupid and you're going to do it on purpose, then, then yeah, they're going to nail you. And they should, quite frankly. But everybody makes mistakes. Not everybody knows the rules. And, uh, and it's up to us to educate and, and get the point out there. And it's up to you as well, as you watch this video, uh, to make sure that you spread the word when somebody wants to go fly. Tell them, tell them what you know. And, and if you don't, send them to someone who does. And um, so really great conversation with these guys. And I really appreciate what they do. And, and they were available. They were right there and answering questions and joking around. And, and it's always great to have an FA guy that says, we're not happy until you're unhappy because this has been the FA joke forever. Uh, that's kind of what we say about the FA in the, uh, in, in, in the, in the, uh, the user side. The FA is not supposed to say that. But so that was a, that was a great joke. Uh, so that's kind of what I got from the uh, the symposium. There were a lot more. There were a lot of discussions. There were a lot of topics. Uh, the uh, FAA, the UAS CTI program that's coming up for universities in order to help universities with uh, streamlining their teaching and everything. So there will be more on that as well. But um, just an overall great experience. I was positively impressed. I didn't go in there with a lot of expectations, but came out with actually something that I thought was great. So uh, there is another episode. I don't get commissions from this, but there's another episode. They call it episode uh, coming up in August. So if you have the extra money, I know it's hard right now, uh, but it, I think it's a good way to sign up and, uh, and get to talk to people that you wouldn't otherwise. So this is all I'm going to say. I don't know how long I've been running now. 13 minutes. Well, look at that. And uh, but um, if you have any questions about the symposium, anything or actually any questions for anything, really, just let me know. Leave your comments. You guys are doing awesome. We're speeding so fast towards 5000 subscribers right now. So if you want to subscribe, click right here if you haven't already. And then uh, I will see you guys next week.